10 black newspapers from New York to California have joined forces to launch a new collective space to provide news specifically to communities of color. The new platform is called Word in Black and will be led by the nation's leading black news publishers. Their reporting will feature stories on racial e equity, education, police reform, healthcare disparities, social justice, and politics. Word in Black's managing director, Nick Charles, said, These different publishers sometimes have different mindsets, different politics, and they live in different parts of the country. But their affection and love for communities are what binds them. And joining me now to discuss is managing director for Word in Black, Nick Charles. Hello, Mr. Charles. How are you? So well, why Mr. this? Black. Why now? What's the need? Well, the need is always there. Um, as you know, there's been a crunch in legacy newspapers or legacy journalism for the last 10 or 15 years. And it has affected medium-sized newspapers, corporate newspapers, and it's definitely affected um, small, regional, and local newspapers like the Black-owned newspapers in Word and Black. These are newspapers that have been around for, in some cases, over a century, um, definitely two or three generations. They are run by families, they're family enterprises, and they're part and parcel of the fabric of the communities where they are. And, you know, they look around and they say, okay, folks are not doing as well as they used to do, they don't publish as much as they used to, and they have to make that digital transformation and transition. And so they came together, the 10 of them, and they started this broad-based national platform called Word in Black, and we utilize the content a lot from our publishers for our site, and we do original stuff as well, as well. But the biggest thing is to make sure that folks know that the black-owned press is alive, is thriving, and is still covering um, the communities that they uh, live in. So, I mean, I'm sure that some of uh, your conditions there are like ours here on the Black News Channel. You know, we may not have the biggest budgets and the most resources, but you can give, you can put the spotlight on a particular issue in a way that only you can you know is that the driving force or is it or is the driving force to maintain the voice of these newspapers in this new digital age or both i think it's both i think you know one thing the pandemic did is exposed all the issues that we knew existed all the time we all knew about the disparities around education and housing and health care and policing and and banking we, we can go down the list that said, we also know that the Black-owned press has always been there to report on these issues in the communities where they exist. And so you have them now saying, okay, let's even laser focus on these issues that have been brought to the fore in this moment after the, uh, the untimely murder of Mr. George Floyd last year and the protests and the demonstrations. There seems to be a moment where people are more interested in these issues, even though we have been clamoring and highlighting them for decades. And so we're going to strike while the island is hot and say, okay, we're formed Word in Black to specifically address these issues and covering them in our communities, whether they're in Seattle, New York, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, Michigan, St. Louis, Sacramento, wherever they are, we'll cover them. You know, as a managing director, how do you make this gain traction? There, you know, in the digital space, there are quite a few now. Uh, uh, news sources specifically dedicated to black interests. And that's kind of the beauty of the digital space is that, you, you know, the, the access, uh, the, the entry point is very relatively low. You can do it. How do you make this stand out and, and actually succeed in that space with all the competition? That well, exists? we're starting with the advantage. We are the black owned press. We have been around for a while and we're focusing on the issues that really matter. Not to say that we don't think that entertainment and sports matter because they are part of the culture, they're part of the news cycle every day. But we're talking about folks who may be evicted soon, which will disproportionately affect black and brown people. We're talking about kids going back to school in public schools, mostly black and brown kids in public schools who will be affected whether they are mass mandates or not, whether there will be vaccinations or not. We are highlighting the issues and letting folks know these are the issues that affect our community every day. And we are going to keep hammering away that we need relief. We need folks to understand that we are on their side. We need people to understand that we're going to highlight these topics to let them know what the solutions may be for their families and for their communities. 
What what was the the conversation like to to bring all these like you know like you said these are people do not always see the eye to eye just because people are black doesn't mean they have the same politics. Uh, and so what was the discussion like to bring all of these different voices under the same umbrella and say this is valuable for us to do together even though we have these differences? I, I think you know one of the things is as I said before is the affection, affinity, love of community. I think they, they sat down and said, hey, look, you know, we're in different parts of the country. What goes on in Texas doesn't go on in New York. What goes on in Seattle doesn't go on in Michigan. What goes on in Atlanta does not go on in St. Louis. But the communities that we represent are facing the same issues every day. There are different responses, different resources, and different solutions that we can come up with. But the reality is if we as these publishers, as publishers are going to continue to survive and thrive, and make that digital transformation and transition, we need to come up with a better model than just each of us tr struggling in our, in our separate silos. So this is an opportunity to not to showcase the good work that they have been doing all along and an opportunity for them to maybe capture some advertisers, some fellow traffic dollars that can keep them going f into the future. Nick Charles, thank you for joining me tonight, and good luck on this very interesting and exciting new venture for you. Your Black History Moment is next.